and collaboration between us and the Palestinians, us and our Arab neighbors, and us and also other countries which are relevant, obviously the West, etc., which are relevant to this equation. And here I believe that once we'll have common enemies, again, the whole strategy of Israel, security strategy, will change as we see, as we have seen in the many, many years since the 50s between the Israeli government and the Jordanian, the Hashemite regime, where actually we had common interest, and in spite of the fact that we did not have peace, actually security relations continued, prevailed for the benefit of the two sides, and undoubtedly, if there'll be peace, the issue of interest will be much uh, uh, higher and, uh, and better. I will conclude by saying that it can happen, that I believe it will happen, and I believe that there are so many commonalities between us Israelis and our neighbors, mainly the Palestinians, also uh, Syrians and others. This will come within the relations that we have already with Jordan and with Egypt post the, the, the peace which were signed in 1978-9 and 1994. And this, I believe, will construct a whole different Israeli approach towards our strategy. I will finalize by one sentence that I may elaborate later and say that I believe this will also, and it will answer uh, Majid al-Khaj's uh, idea, I believe that eventually this will also change and alter Israel internally and the regime of, of uh, what Israel goes towards what, meaning the idea of uh, Jewish state, Zionist, etc., etc. I believe Israel will also change post a situation like this, which will also influence internally our security and threats. And I also believe that eventually some kind of a model of confederation within Israel, Palestine, and, uh, and Jordan will take place. But I'm speaking here really, really much, much, much too uh, much maybe into the history. But I presume that in 50, 60 years, this can happen. Thank you. And that was a, a pretty optimistic start. I'll take that phrase. Peace will bring our security. Uh, leave it hanging in there for the moment, uh, and then hand over, uh, I guess, for a more specific uh, uh, security perspective to uh, Brigadier General Sh Shlomo Brom, who is Director uh, of the Program on Israel-Palestine at the Institute for National Security Studies and has a long background in the IDF. Thank you. Uh, I want uh, to start by supporting strongly uh, the comment that Majid made in the first session when he objected the separation between uh, Palestinians and Israelis in two separate uh, sessions. And not only because of the way it uh, perceives the rela relationship between the two parties, uh, because it creates a perception of uh, disconnect between the two sides, but also because as a person that uh, is engaged for the last 17 years in looking for ways to solve the security problems uh, for the purpose of enabling the re realization of the two-state solution, the main question, in my opinion, is how to reconcile the two subjects namely how to reconcile the Israeli security requirements with uh, the Palestinian state sovereignty and viability. Because, you know, every agreement that uh, a state concludes means giving, giving up a piece of sovereignty because you are taking upon it itself uh, limitations, but the question is how much, how much? Because certainly there are elements in Israel uh, that uh, uh, their concept of uh, finding uh, a solution uh, for the security requirements of Israel implies actually uh, that the Palestinian future state will not be sovereign and uh, will not be viable. And that is not my concept. That is the first point that I wanted to make. Now, the other point, and that relates to, to in some uh, respect, to what uh, Ron said. He said that peace brings security. Well, it is certainly true. But when you deal with security problem, you must adopt a pessimistic approach. 
because the question that you have to ask is what happens if it fails? And now when we, are, we ask ourselves the question what happens if it fails, persons that are engaged with security have two nightmares and both of them are connected to the nature of the Palestinian state. So once again, we go back to the first session. The one nightmare is the possibility that the Palestinian state will be an hostile state that will become a source for security threats to the state of Israel. The other nightmare, which is even a worse nightmare, is that the Palestinian state will become a failed state, a dysfunctional state, a state that has no control on what is happening in the state. And by the way, for Israel, and that's true I think for every state, it is much easier to manage a conflict with an hostile state that is a functioning state, like, let's say, the embryonic Hamas state in Gaza that was described by Yazid in the previous session, then we to, then to deal or to manage a conflict with a failed state, dysfunctional state that have no control over its territory that is in a situation of anarchy. Now, uh, so, the question is, how do we deal with uh, all uh, these problems? Now, when uh, Ron uh, talked about his different titles, he forgot to mention another title that he shares with me. And that is that uh, the two of us are members of the steering committee of the Geneva Initiative. So we are part of the people that made the Geneva Initiative. And we believe that we have solutions for, for, for these questions. And the solutions are very well known because everybody talks about it. And that starts from the fact that the Palestinian state that should, should be non-militarized. And then it deals with a number of commitments that the two parties have to take upon themselves, not to air the integral territory of the other party, not to allow their uh, territory to become a source of security threats to the others, to fight uh, with uh, uh, terrorism, uh, uh, not to form alliances with third parties that are hostile to the other party, etc. So that is uh, one element, but uh, commitments can be violent. So the next element is a very strong monitoring and verification mechanism in which naturally a third party has to take a very important role. But I want to focus on what is new. And what is you refers uh, to developments in the last uh, decade, and mostly developments that are a result of the Second Intifada and the developments in Gaza. Uh, you know, there is a difference between uh, human beings and computers. You can uh, give a computer uh, an instruction to reset, and it resets and you start from a clean situation. You cannot tell human beings to reset. And the last 10 years had a very strong impact on the Israelis and certainly I am sure also on the Palestinians. What did these 10 years do? First of all, they increased the mutual mistrust of the, of the two parties. 